Well, let me, let me address first the protocols themselves. Uh, I know that there's been conversation about that already this morning about uh, what the requirements are being put into place are for the conference. I mentioned the uh, exhaustive review of the way we should move forward safely for our student athletes, our coaches, our support staff, our game management staff, um, in terms of risk mitigation around COVID-19. So the everyday point of care antigen testing approach that uh, was recommended by the medical group and being put into place on all 14 university campuses uh, for uh, the, the football programs uh, is the key part of that, uh, which we think and know is the most stringent uh, protocol of any, any uh, athletic conference uh, that exists and it mitigates that risk down to where we are, we are very comfortable with being able to move forward. So I'll just say that first of all, um, the specific protocols around test positivity rates and population positivity rates on that everyday testing, again, uh, on the advice of the medical uh, recommendation, committee recommendation, uh, they are um, appropriately stringent, but we do think they are reasonable for being able to meet them moving forward. So we're, we're, we're optimistic in being able to get those tests in place and get that moving as quickly as possible in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I'd, I'll address that first one for you and we'll, we'll try to keep from getting too technical on it. It's, it has to do with the team group. So specifically to the team being tested every day uh, with the point of care test and supporting staff that interact with them daily. So that congregate group, if you wanna think of it that way, so to, within that group, the test positivity rate, so the percentage of those tested on a given day that are positive on that test is one measure. The other is the population, the entire group of active cases that it were identified as positive. So those are the two statistics. And the medical community that was working with us gave us those parameters for what they thought those thresholds should be in order to be able to continue to, con to uh, have contact practice and compete. So that's the, those are the two statistics. Uh, both, both Chancellor Green and I pushed very hard uh, in our meetings, respective meetings, that, that attendance should be based on local authorities, health officials, uh, governments, et cetera. Um, Again, in our footprint, our situation is different. Um, but that does not appear that it's gonna be the case. Uh, certainly did not want it to be a deal breaker. And uh, we're gonna think of some innovative ways to have our fans involved. Uh, we love our fans, they're the greatest fans in college football. And uh, hopefully uh, we can uh, get them uh, involved in, in some uh, innovative ways and and we're already working on that the important thing is that our fans are going to have husker football and uh, they're not going to be able to be in their seats hopefully just for a year but we're going to need them now as much as we ever have uh, um, i i will say that again um, our amazing fans uh, were all notified when it looked like we were not going to have a traditional season and um, given an option to uh, r respond in a couple of ways. And uh, uh, the results of that pretty much uh, these percentages were 20% of our fans said, please keep our money for our donations and for our season tickets. This is a rough time. We want to support you. We want to be with you. About 60% said, you keep our money and please apply it to next season when hopefully we're going to be back to normal. And only 20% said, we would like a refund. We're, we're with you. Uh, but these are tough times for everybody, not, not just in athletics, and they'll be back next year. So I think that was a tremendous response. And again, a, uh, a, a, a true indication and proof that we have outstanding, wonderful fans, the best in the country. 
And I think on the second part of your question about uh, gatherings, tailgates, um, so forth, around the four home games that we'll, we'll host here or have here on campus, uh, we had already made the decision uh, going into the planning for the season when we were planning a September 5th season, you'll remember uh, earlier, that there would be no tailgating on the campus um, because uh, for us in having our academic mission under underway, we are not having group gatherings of any kind beyond the, the public health directive uh, in Lincoln of size. So that, that decision had already been made. We have uh, one of the most outstanding, if not the most outstanding staff in regards to marketing and promotions and very innovative. Uh, you just need to go back to the spring game, the virtual spring game, and look at the numbers who watched that, and that was a make-believe game. Uh, we're going to have real games. We're going to have uh, BTN. We're going to have ESPN. We're going to have Greg Sharp. We're going to have Matt Davison. We're going to have all the action um, that our listeners uh, on, our, on our tremendous radio network are, are not even going to know that we don't have fans in the stands. But we will have uh, an array of, again, innovative uh, ways to involve our fans. Uh, that, that's what's fun about this business. There's some things that are more fun than others, but to think of ideas and, and to think outside the box, this staff does that as well as any of I, I've seen in my career. Uh, so that was seriously considered as a possible start date for the return to the season. The decision came down to the 24th on the basis of the test availability and getting that implemented. So that was the reason for the, the move to the 24th. I think it's a sound plan. Uh, I, I, I was pushing and hoping, as was Chancellor Green that we could have it on the 16th, 17th begin then so we could have a break. Uh, but hey, uh, we're, we're being very cautious in regards to the medical piece of this. So uh, eight games, eight conference games, four at home, four on the road. Uh, we will play everyone in our division. Um, and, and that of course is very important. And then that will produce, as always, a division champion that will meet uh, for the Big Ten Championship, along with uh, matchups with the rest of the, uh, the the teams, and depending on how they finished, who their opponent will be, and I think that brings uh, a little bit of a unique aspect uh, to to the uh, season, and also allows all of our teams to get nine games in. There are uh, a couple of options, obviously, uh, on the various campuses, and that would be the, the higher seed uh, of, those, of those games' best record. I, I would presume not having uh, that cast in stone. Or even uh, possibly in dome stadiums, maybe uh, two or three dome stadiums, uh, that uh, we would have a, a couple of games in each and um, uh, we got to remember that our weather's going to be a little sketchy in this part of the country in the entire 11-state um, footprint of the Big Ten. So these are things we're going to take into consideration as we work on the schedule throughout this week. Uh, none of this stuff's been done before. <laughs> so uh, uh, we'll look at it. You know, we, we've played in tough conditions. Um, and and, and I, I learned real fast, you get into – mid to late October, you, you can have uh, snow going sideways, whether you're in Lincoln or you're in Ann Arbor or, or East Lansing or wherever. Uh, so our players, they, they understand that, and our coaches. It just might be a, a, a little bit better environment, um, taking into consideration that's where the championship game would be played in a normal season, would be in, in a dome in Indianapolis that all of those games be in that kind of an environment. But we're going to take a good look at that. The last thing I would say is, as we started, it's a good day for Nebraska. It's a good day for being able to return to competition. We look forward to that and the excitement that will come with that for everyone who is anticipating it and, and wanting it so badly. Um, there's something to be said about hope here. You know, we live in a tough time. We live in a time that is challenging for everyone, 
um, that we're the time we're living in, and I am really hopeful because we're being able to move forward, we're being able to try and to make this work, and we're trusting that it's going to work. And I, I thanked earlier our players, uh, their families, our coaches, our staff, Bill and his leadership team for everything that's been done to get this work done and be able to be at this point. Uh, we've been aligned in Nebraska from the top to the top down on what we believe is the right thing to do and moving forward, and it's an exciting day to be able to move forward. And I, I just might add, again, very excited for our players, um, our coaches, and our fans. We, we have a chance to have a very, very good football team. Uh, this, is, this is Scott's third year. Uh, we've got uh, sophomores and juniors and seniors that – understand the program they're very they've worked very very hard this is a, a fabulous reward for them and uh, I applaud Chancellor Green and and his colleagues in the uh, presidents and chancellors and and uh, my colleagues in, as ADs in the conference office a lot a lot of hours went into this and and um, thank you you guys have been uh, pretty good too. the media and we're excited to have an opportunity to give you something to write about uh, because you've been somewhat starved so uh, uh, we thank you for your patience as well.